Hey everybody, welcome back to the Mando Fan Show. We are here to talk about Chapter 12 of The Mandalorian, The Siege, written by John Favreau, directed by Carl Weathers, aka the Master of Disaster, Apollo Creed himself. Uh, I'm John, I'm not the Master of Disaster or anything like that, but uh, thanks for joining us on this live stream. With me as always is James and Lacey, and our guest is a writer, producer, including uh, Sci-Fi's Looking for Leia, a self proclaimed super fan of sci-fi and star wars katrina dennis welcome to the mando fan show <laughs> yeah thank you so so much for having me i'm really <laughs> excited to talk about this episode i was the second they announced carl weathers for this season i was just ready to go so nice. super are excited. you uh, are you privy or a fan of any of his like old school movies like uh, are you into like yeah. predator and that sort of stuff my 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 dad raised me on a healthy uh, amount of action and sci-fi uh, film. So like I, I grew up with it, and I actually familiarized myself with a lot of his directorial work uh, in TV. He's no stranger um, mm -hmm. to to a lot of things. So yeah, I'm I'm really yeah I'm a big fan. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Um, so before we get going, uh, I'm sure a lot of our audience already is aware of you, but why don't you um, just let us know what you have going on lately or soon? Uh, anything you want to plug yeah. off the top? Yeah, uh, I am currently uh, still the co-host of Y Tu Banta Tambien, which is a uh, pop culture po podcast from a Latinx point of view. We started as a Star Wars podcast, and then both of us uh, just moved back into the games industry where me and my co-hosts were kind of like raised uh, in, in <laughs> entertainment. And so now it's a pop culture podcast. Um, nice. So I'm working on that and a bunch of secret things that I signed NDAs for next year. Ooh. So that's it. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, the live NDA. streaming. So no, <laughs> d make sure you don't slip because this is all out there. No. Oh, no. It's all out oh, there. No. Or maybe you uh, should. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, James and Lacey, how you guys? how you guys doing? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. My wife is putting together the uh, the Thanksgiving like shopping or, or like need to get list or whatever. Mm -hmm. So we're making all those decisions. And I was like, I want pumpkin pie. I want chocolate pie. I want the pink stuff. She's like, I'm not getting all of that for like the three of us. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, hmm. You sound like so baby Yoda bummed. just wanting every single item there is. Yeah. To eat. <laughs> I was like, does Kroger sell blue macaroons? I've never <laughs> wanted macaroons so much before than watching that show this morning. Yeah. What a huge yeah. comeback for macaroons today. Uh, macaroons <laughs> have always been there. Is that true? Yeah. 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 All right. Absolutely. I, I, especially for like city kids like me, like those are those are our, our fancy snacks of choice that we use to make ourselves feel rich. So <laughs> I go to uh, the French bakery in Epcot and get them because they have like the little variety pack. And I'm always like, um, I'm French. I wonder, <laughs> if <they'll>, uh, be... <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they'll be uh, available at Galaxy's Edge. It's just like Ooh. they're just macaroons. But you know what? They're yeah. blue. So. Yeah, I, they, I just they, throw in a little cheddar and get some macaroni and cheese. Uh oh, look at this! Guy. I just always love that Disney no. World, like the French people, because they have French people that work at that bakery, and they're all so yeah. beautiful, and they have wonderful <laughs> accents, and you just feel like total like a disaster every time you walk in there. You're like, I'm sweating, yeah. and like, <laughs> I'll I take drank, whatever thing. <laughs> I drank ar around the world uh, at Epcot, and then went to like Hibachi at uh, in Japan in Epcot, and it was. It was it was rough. I'll just leave. <laughs> yeah. um, but it hit the, so we'll get we'll get to the the macaroon talk and all that stuff. But it was funny that it, it like looked like it was in like a a little sleeve like Girl Scout cookies. Like and mm -hmm. I could I could polish off Thin Mints in one shot. Just bing bing, and Baby Yoda looked like he would have no problem doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, all right. So obviously this episode, as we're talking here, had a lot of fun in it, but also had a lot of action and that sort of thing. But what we like to do to warm up the engines here on the Mando Fan Show is rate this thing. And it's not your typical rating if you're new to the Mando Fan Show. We, since we don't get to see his face a lot, we Ooh. use Pedro Pascal's face as our scale. So from <laughs> zero to Ooh. 10, Pedro Pascal faces. We'll bring him up <laughs> on the screen in a minute. Uh, so we'll start with, uh, James, we'll start with you this week. What did you rate chapter 12 on the Pedro Pascal face scale? 
I give it a 7.5, but I will say when I was prompted with what my score was, I was like, do I want to go 8.5? And I actually kind of backed it down a little bit more. I thought about the episode and comparing it to like really Ooh. my true favorites. Um, but 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 7.5 is definitely like um, it, it's it is that middle of the road uh, that is like, hey, there's some really great stuff in here. And then there was some times where I was like, OK, it's a little slow. I think the school's <laughs> cool, but like we're just mm. walking around. We're not really doing anything. You know, we're working yeah. on the ship a little bit, but it, it the, the second half of it picks up and you're like, oh, my oh, wait, God, this is awesome. So I, I mm. felt that all things being equal. That 7.5, that, that's my middle of the road. This was a, a solid episode. Okay, right on. Uh, Katrina, how about you? Yeah, um, I I would also give him I give it the the seven point five. And honestly, like I don't think that's a bad score to give an episode that followed the reveal of Katie Sackoff as Bo Katan. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like true. that's a rough show to follow. And yeah. I think that this episode did that very well. Um, and that my my the things I don't like about it are greatly outweighed by the things I like about it. Yeah, right on. Yeah, <laughs> um, Lacey, how about you? What'd you give this one? I gave it an eight out of 10, um, which is better than the spider episode, but not as good as the Cobb Vanth and bo episodes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this one good. was good. I think the ending, which we'll get to really gave it a bunch of points for me. And then off, obviously all the baby Yoda moments, which I feel like they threw everything into the, they were like, Oh, you want a lot of baby Yoda stuff. Here's your moment. Here it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's Slash it's baby Groot, because it's basically a baby Groot. Yeah, right. As baby yeah. Yoda. <laughs> um, yeah, I felt uh, similar to that because I gave the uh, chapter nine or chapter nine and nine because uh, of the Cobb Vanth and just the epicness of the special effects and, and all of that. Um, and uh, then I went down a little bit with the uh, ice episode and, and I've gone up and down and the Katie Sackoff one, like Katrina, you just said, took it up here. So it's tough to follow a big act. It's like trying to go on. Uh, it's it's oh. like trying to go on. <laughs> She'll I'm be back. To get Katrina back in, yeah. <laughs> but it's like trying to follow, like being a new, it's like being a new artist and trying to follow Lady Gaga on, on a concert stage. And it's just tough to do. It's tough to do that. So um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so yeah, Katrina's okay. back. Good. Okay. Good. Sorry about that. Had a little no, ago. no problem. <laughs> um, so I gave it a seven point five, also. So the same as uh, James and Katrina, and we're all kind of right there. So our average yeah. together on the Pedro Pascal face scale is a seven point six from the four of us. There, the, there he is. There, mm -hmm. down at the bottom. Uh, no helmet, hair, uh, doing great, smiling, collecting those Mando paychecks, just living that life. The, uh, there was a movie trailer the other day with Pedro Pascal. I, I, is it the? It's not the Daisy Ridley one, was it? Oh, the no, it was, no, it was no. the Lava Girl, Shark Boy, and Lava Girl. Oh, Shark Boy and Lava yeah, Girl. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I watched that and I was like, I, I don't know him from Game of Thrones or really anything else. So when I watched that, I was like, that is the Mandalorian voice talking. <laughs> oh yeah. I it just he stuck out so much. I was like, this is weird. It feels like the Mandalorian is narrating this trailer. And I'm like, I'm blanking weird. on the yeah, I'm blanking on the name of it, but that movie that he's like an astronaut in, it's literally the Mandalorian voice. And like even yeah. like because it's got it's going through like some type of microphone. He's like, look over there, like do oh. this. And you're like, oh, it's the Mandalorian just walking on an alien planet. <laughs> Pretty mm -hmm. funny. Um, yeah, I mean, I loved him in Game of Thrones, even though. Spoiler alert! Didn't end. I hope it ends better for Mando than it did for his character in that show. Maybe things um, have changed. Yeah, in, exactly. Uh, season nine, right? What's that, John? Maybe things What's will that? change in season nine. In season nine, <laughs> it'll really round out. Yeah, Baby Yoda will be fifty-nine, a little more mature. <laughs> no, I meant for Game of he, Thrones. He meant for Game of Thrones. Oh, we won't talk about that. <laughs> we don't want. Yeah, we don't want people to leave in here um all right so our patrons our patreon score from our patrons uh, over at uh, patreon.com slash resistance broadcast they get to give their scores and we put their average together they were a little below us they gave this a 7.1 mm -hmm. uh so there's their score there a uh, little less pedro -y, and that's uh is, i mean that is that that's the okay. first time they've rated lower than us i think so this season yeah last year they did at least once or twice mm -hmm. um so yeah this season 
Yeah. I just love um, his little smile. It just oh, brings yeah. me so much joy. Yeah. Now, why, why couldn't they get his action figure to look like that? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I don't love know who that guy little, is. Did right you see here, that ugly action I figure? And added an extra one. Yeah. Yeah. It, it definitely. I mean, I'm not surprised. I was also, you know, I don't know if you saw my reaction to the Poe Dameron. Yes, uh, Poe Dameron, first, the two most attractive yeah. guys, and they can't get it. They can't. How did it happen? How, who did this? <laughs> yeah. That's why Oscar Isaac left. He's like, I'm <laughs> that's enough. Sorry, you can't do any justice. Yeah, and then he missed the table. He missed that amazing Lego figurine for Life Day. Yeah, with the sweater. Oh man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, all right. So we have a comment from one of our uh, patrons, uh, and that was Stephen Bowman, who gave it a seven. And Stephen said it was a lot of fun. Carl Weathers' direction felt classic Star Wars to me, and the bits of new story elements were intriguing and welcome additions. This episode reminded me of playing an early Lucas video game like Rebel Assault or Bounty Hunter. That's pretty mm. cool. Definitely a little nostalgic in that regard. Um, and there's certainly a lot of throwback beats in this, uh, which we'll get to in the next segment for the Easter eggs. But thank you for that, Stephen. Um, and oh, we have a, a super chat here from Red Wolf who said, what do you guys hope to see in the next episode? The Jedi. Well, it's not officially <laughs> called that. That's a speculation. Uh, do you think we will get an explanation of Ezra and Rex? Love everything you all do. So I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I don't know. I mean, as much as I would love it there. to happen. Yeah. yeah. As much as I'd love it to happen. I, who knows? Who knows? Katrina, do you like speculating or do you like just let me get oh, I... to it and... I do. I just don't. Uh, uh, sometimes I don't do it in public, but I feel like it's appropriate here. Um, I really would love to see Tamara Morrison uh, play more than one role uh, with regards to that mm, question mm -hmm. um, oh, in yeah. this in this particular season. So that yeah, that would be cool. Um, are you thinking like you want to see Rex or any clones? I mean, you know, in my heart of hearts, I would take any clones, but yeah, it would definitely look like logically to me, if he were to play two roles in this, in this season, it would be Rex and Boba. So, yeah. Right. Cool. You know, right on. Who knows? Maybe fives lives. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe he, yeah. Imagine like the, <laughs> the money Morrison earns from this, but he like plays 12 clones and he just, they just keep putting them out there. <laughs> like Michael Keaton in multiplicity is just like bing, 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 bing. Yeah. But exactly. they get a little weirder as they go along. <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah, that, I mean that's an underrated movie, by the way. All I'm gonna say. <laughs> um, Spoony Wan here said nine Pedros for the episode, uh, ten child steak faces for Lacey's hair. Oh, okay. <laughs> what is child steak faces? The that's, face that's he when makes it's when like, it's roasting ah. the steak. Ah. Oh, <laughs> okay, yeah. I got you, Spoony Wan. Good job. That's so All right. cute. <laughs> okay, now um, we're going to get into our Easter eggs here. So context is not important. We'll just go around taking turns and uh, pointing out either an Easter egg we found in the episode, or even if it's a, a reference to something in Star Wars or even pop culture. Like last week, they had the Apollo 13 ties between Bryce Dallas Howard and her father. That sort of stuff. Uh, we don't have to reach too far because then we'll be here all night, which is okay with me. Probably not mm -hmm. everyone. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll take some turns having some fun with some Easter eggs. So, uh, Lacey, you want to kick us off and hit us with uh, something that you observed in uh, Chapter 12? Yeah, I think my favorite kind of Easter egg thing in the background was the IG-11 statue in the middle of the town in Navarro. Aww. It was so adorable, and it was like the perfect little detail uh, that really sold it for me. That's a good one. I yeah. wonder if it was actually him. Do you think he like got him and mm. just made him a statue? Nah. Was it, well, he was in the lava, Maybe. so it would be a little. It looked like yeah. they took pieces of metal and like rebuilt him. Yeah, yeah. it was really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, Katrina, you think he got like liquefied? Yeah, I mean, maybe there were in my, you know, again in my heart of hearts, there are parts of him like Lacey suggested <laughs> in the in the statue. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's just an homage to him rather than yeah. actually him. There would be, I feel like there would be something morbid and against like my droids rights part. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if that were actually him on display. So That's yeah. true. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do a little part of me hopes that like grief as a tribute to him installed some sort of self-destruct if he ever needed it. <laughs> and just let that. that thing let that thing rip and kill some baddies um mm -hmm. all right uh katrina do you have uh, anything that uh, stood out to you 
Yeah, um, there are a million things that stood out to me, but one of the big things along with that nod to IG-11 in the first season um, is that if uh, you notice the Aqualish that Kara um, kind of cleans up the scoundrels that she finds are in the armorer's forgery room. Um, so I thought that was a really interesting and cool detail to show that like that place is now cleaned out. Like she's gone, whether, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. one way or another, she's not around there anymore. Um, so that, you know, puts another piece of Mando's story out in the galaxy that he now has to recover is like that way of life versus Bo's way of life as a Mandalorian. So a lot of storytelling in that. The interesting thing about that is they start with a pan, uh, a tilt down from like where that skull was with the fade, mm -hmm. but it's really weird because you usually have that when there's sunlight involved and it shines on the item and then it changes the color of the wall. So I'm not sure how the wall has that outline. It doesn't really, but I did like that it, it was there. Dust. So it means someone took it. Yeah. yeah maybe. Dust. <laughs> For forgery <laughs> dust. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's a good one. Yeah. And those, so that's the same species as uh, Ponda Baba, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I was I was like look it was so dark and I was looking I'm like did she did any of the arms fall off like any arms on the ground <laughs> uh, I was looking real hard for Easter eggs. I got um, really excited when they pulled out that big old uh, what is that that knife um, I was like oh somebody's gonna get their oh, arm yeah, cut yeah, off yeah 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, James what do you got um. Uh, I got one, but I'll, I'll save it for you. I imagine you'll take it, John. Um, how about M count, right? Mm hmm. Midi chlorians. They're yeah. back. Yeah, they never, they never said the word, but we all know. <laughs> we definitely knew what it was. Yeah. They, they, they might as well have been like delivering the lines and every time been like, uh, we, we don't have another donor with as much M count. As, uh, as Yoda. <laughs> you know, like actually looking and winking. <laughs> I thought it was McClunky at first. I was like, yeah, yeah. Count, but no, it's midichlorians, right? Crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gotta be, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I'm curious what you think. I was, <laughs> well, it's in the Hottie special. They brought it back there too. Yeah. <laughs> the McClunky? Do you like, do you like McClunky, Katrina? Do you like the insert of McClunky? I just, I mean I don't care. I laugh really hard when it when it happened. Like I've just kind of in my age I've learned to roll with the punches and the McClunkies of life. So yeah, yeah yep. you know I was like whatever. You know I'm not angry about it. I'm not gonna put my a, a, a line in my face over it. That's so right. Harrison Ford of you to be like I don't care. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't care. Whatever. I don't care. I don't. Hey, <laughs> it's just a gig. It's just a job, kid. Um, McClunky. Um, so, uh, yeah, James, I'm not sure what you think I was going to go with. I, uh, maybe I do because of, because of, yeah, I, I'm not doing that one though. Oh, you're not? I'm gonna, All right. I'm going to do the homage to the opening of A New Hope, uh, at the end with Moff Gideon's ship doing the flyover that just never ended. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm not the most observant person when it comes to Easter eggs, but that one just punched me in the face. That was just like, oh, when the ship just kept going, and then you see the engines in the back. And it has the triangular shape of the um, Star Trek. It really uh, is clearly a direct homage. Uh, so that's uh, that's my first one there. Um, mm -hmm. Katrina, do you have uh, any other uh, cool things you want to point out? Um, let's see. I have a very, very messy list of... of uh... <laughs> Of notes, I wanted to talk about uh, Carson Tiva, who I'm really excited to see back. Um, uh, I, I thought he was kind of just a cameo character, and mm -hmm. now maybe he looks like he's sort of developing into Mando's personal commissioner, Gordon. So I was gonna say he's like a detective. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's like tracking Mando's like like tra you know trail. So it's it's interesting to see that like now the New Republic is like very aware of this guy. Um, he's they're probably very aware of the child and they're following him. So yeah. I'm interested to see how that's going to converge. That's a great mm -hmm. analogy. The Commissioner Gordon aspect. I didn't think about that. And mm -hmm. he got he got kind of deep in this episode. Flexing, yeah. the, did. flexing the acting chops a little. Uh, the, definitely the more the most one of the more serious scenes uh, that we've had this season so far, reflecting back on the uh, Alderaan genocide and, and him putting the, the metal down. I mean, we'll get into that later, mm -hmm. but that's a that's that's for sure a good one. Um, Lacey, what else you got? Um, so it's a couple things that kind of fall into one scene. 
So when they're going to shut down the reactor, which itself is like so Star mm. Wars-y, yeah. uh, when they go through the door, it opens the way that the old ones did back in the day. It's not like mm-hmm. a, they didn't actually have a fancy door. They did like a stop motion door, <laughs> which was really funny. Um, it, I loved that he made a joke about no guardrails because some, as someone like me who's afraid of heights, like nothing has guardrails in Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Like the Kylo Ren, Han Solo scene, no guardrails, nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just the noise it makes when he turns it down when it's like pew and you're like mm-hmm. there it is again <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and yep. just him doing the obi-wan thing like having yeah. to going around go yeah. around yeah yeah there's a lot um, there yeah and the whole thing like you say it looked just like the thing obi-wan had to shut down uh mm-hmm. like the, i wonder if they even like got the same blueprint it looked like the same graphics thing. yeah yeah um all right, that's a good pick too. Right on, uh, James. Do you have uh, something else here? Are Are you not taking that one? I'll, <laughs> take, just do it. <laughs> I'll take it then. It's the, the okay. Kessel Run, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They mm-hmm. They mention uh, the the Maelstrom and all this. So uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, I think it's kind of interesting. As as many times as Kessel has been referenced, obviously referenced in the original movie, A New Hope, right? Um, now that yeah. we've seen it in solo this to me was like oh it's it's a solo reference because they're talking about the maelstrom and they're talking about how many entrances there are and the different moons and they're obviously talking about this whole system like right around that area mm-hmm. and stuff and um all, all being delivered by basically c3po <laughs> which yes. was cool yeah. too yeah um but yeah, uh, strong solo vibes with that scene. So I, I was really excited to see that. I was a part of me was hoping she was going to say the site of the famous Kessel Run, even though that would have been so on the nose. I don't care. I was <laughs> love Han Solo. Yeah, or or something mm-hmm. like no one has ever done it below this <laughs> amount of time, or something. You know what I mean? Or, or distance, or 14. it's impossible to go and and. <laughs> Some say it's been beaten, or you know, whatever. I don't know. Legend that would has be fun. It, yeah, yeah. Legend has it. Um. All right. My next one, I thought Lacey was gonna do, but uh, the same teacher mentions uh, Chandrilla, uh, mm-hmm. the New Republic capital ben Solo's where Solo's birth planet. Ben Solo was born there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So yeah, and it's funny because if I didn't have the subtitles on. They they fleshed out that whole dialogue from the teacher, even yeah. when Baby Yoda is full volume, mm-hmm. and they still put her dialogue, even when you, you can't audibly hear the droid speaking. And that's I was just like locked into that. Especially I in love that watch. because you could see what they're saying, but at the same time, it ruined Cobb Vanth for me because it says Cobb Vanth before he was on screen. So I was like, oh, that happened with Bo Katan as well. And yeah, that, you're all. Oh. It's like oh yeah, wait, oh, yeah. is it is oh. <laughs> Oh. It, is. it is. It is. It is. <laughs> that was like yeah, so. Katrina, la- last week we were talking with uh, Ming Chen came on, and we were talking about um, the whole rumors uh, about uh, Ahsoka. Mm-hmm. And when Bo-Katan said, um, "I'll sh- yeah, I'll send you to this Jedi," and like we were joking, like we were all speculating, like, "Oh, I wonder if it's Ahsoka." And then she goes, uh, "And uh, her name's Ahsoka Tano." Just like. <laughs> 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 just like, the whole like buzz is just like oh there it is she just very yeah. directly said yeah. there it is yeah yeah um, well, I, I definitely think that like that was like my clue that this wasn't going to be our Ahsoka episode and it would take the whole season because she like mm-hmm. outright said this is where you're going you're going to go see Ahsoka Tano and I was like yeah. all right we're not seeing Ahsoka as quickly as like a lot of people think we are <laughs> right. so right yeah mm-hmm. yeah do you do you think it'll be uh next week I I feel like if it's next week, it's going to be the tail end of the episode. Um, Cause yeah, like I, I, I still think like the media stuff that's going to happen is around like the sixth, seventh episode of this season, just the mm-hmm. way it's, it's been paced. So mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. I hope she uh, pops in in more than one episode. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. Um, like you say, like give us the tease at the end and the cliffhanger. And then um, the fact that this isn't a, a, a binge show, it, you, you're left speculating and wondering the next yeah. week, just like TV almost should be, really. Mm-hmm. Um, even though I, I smash Stranger Things in like one day. Like, Still not done I, with it. Oh, really? <laughs> Freddy Krueger got cast today. Do you guys hear about that? No. Robert, Englund? Robert oh, Englund's going to be in Stranger Things. 
That's yeah. awesome. How yeah, exciting. Cool. As yeah. Freddy, which is really weird. <laughs> oh, no, I probably not. But, <laughs> like, plays like a, a janitor or something. Like, yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> uh, well, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just made that up. I don't know if Freddy Krueger was a janitor. I don't know his origin story. But um, anyway, um, Katrina, did you have any others uh, that popped out or references or anything? Um, I mean, nothing reference wise. I think everything I saw was covered, but I do want to like highlight the uh, magic of um, puppetry in this episode with the space meerkat. Who oh, is the loved most it. Delightful rat like meerkat <laughs> I've ever seen in the whole world and just embodies my energy so much. <laughs> um, I, I loved it, thought it was the star of the show. Nice. Oh, it was really yeah. good when it was like rubbing yeah. against her. It was so cute. <laughs> so cute. And, and that's, that's a good point because what I think it was chapter nine when they had those like CG desert creatures mm-hmm. and it reminded me of like the CG gopher in Indiana Jones four. And it, it takes, I don't mean to nitpick, but that stuff takes me out a little bit. You can tell this thing was tangible. Mm-hmm. Was, I thought that was really cool. Right. Yeah. I thought it was really cool. Um, okay, Lacey, uh, any more? Any left ones here? Um, so a small one, and then I'll give like an actual real one. Small one, they say blast them. There they are, blast them, which is like yeah, the classic Star Wars yeah. line. Mm-hmm. Um, but the big one that I think is the main thing of the episode is dark troopers at the end of the episode. <laughs> it's interesting, yeah, which yeah. is potentially coming from EU and also Dark Forces video game. <clears throat> Yeah, so. I mean, I figured we'd probably get there. Uh, you're right. It, it it's technically an is it, an Easter egg. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, even if it is like an homage or a reference to, but it, it does make me question, like, what are these things? Like, everybody, even people who know are like, let's brighten them up. I can't really see what I'm looking at here. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. They really know. hit it very well, what it is. Like, yeah. if, yeah. I thought my cousin asked glance, me if I they thought, were Darth um, Vader's. I was uh, like, that's what I. I thought they were Darth Vader suits when I first saw really? it. I, I, know I that thought they stupid, were. But... I forgot exactly what sort of troopers they were, but in the uh, uh, the Anowit sector storyline, um, in oh that Star Wars mobile RPG platformer, the Uprising. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Star Wars they... Uprising. The bad guys in suits in that game. I thought that was them at first oh. because of how mm-hmm. broadly they were built. Right. Um, but yeah, that definitely makes sense to me. Yeah, and I feel like are, this has been those are droids, oh, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those were yeah, droids. Yeah. Big armored droids. Um, mm-hmm. but I feel like this has been a really big season for the creators basically saying, like, we can pull whatever we want from wherever we want yeah. at any time and put it in the yeah. story. Because they've done it over and over again this season and they've done it, they've done it really well. Yeah, Absolutely. you fans, yeah. we got you. Video game fans from the '90s, we got you. <laughs> Holiday special fans, double we got, got you. <laughs> yeah. And just obscure action figure fans, yeah, mm-hmm. like vehicle fans too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like those transports and stuff. Favreau yeah. loves transports. Yes, I think he had that transport. I think he mentioned that in the panel, but I might be just making that up. I feel like he did mention having that kind of stuff when he was little. By well, the end well of speaking the season, of ships, John. Gonna, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, by the end of the that. season, I wouldn't be surprised if he tries to get one of his old toys, like literally in a shot or something. <laughs> right. Like, Tripping to himself. He probably already um, did. Yeah. So, James, you're talking to ships here. What do you got? Um, the one that you were mentioning earlier is an Arquadin's uh, cruiser, which is like m- mostly seen in Rebels. So it, it's very Dave Filoni that he would say, let's give um, this guy's looking for remnants, uh, ships, a ship to call his own. Um, even though it's not like a specific ship, like it mm-hmm. wasn't this one from Rebels. Um, that's really, I mean, they showed up in some other stuff like Dr. Afra, but I mean, like this is a rebel ship for first and foremost and it was really yeah. cool to see it come through because you're like oh i know they're doing the star destroyer thing but like this particular one is definitely not that what is it oh wait a minute hold up that's the first live action version we've seen of this ship it kind of yeah. reminded me of rogue one when we saw the hammerheads because it was yeah. like oh yeah yeah it was like oh that's a that's <clears throat> rebels right there and now it's in live action so I, I got excited when that ship came flying through for more than one reason as you mentioned it before mm-hmm. yeah nice um i have two two 
ones left here. One is I, th I could be wrong, but I think the sound, something about the sound of the stormtrooper blasters reminded me like it was taken right out of a new hope. Like that, the, the audible sound of it, uh, like hmm. Ben bird hitting the piece of metal on the, on the wire type of thing. Um, and then the last one, again, a new hope, uh, when they blasted the console and the guy's body fell on it. And then the guy took the body and just threw it off like Han Solo does when they're in the mm -hmm. detention center. Mm -hmm. Um, that had to have been some sort of nod, just the guy's body laying on the thing. And he's like, get out. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So, uh, I mean, I think, I think we covered most of it. I'm sure people are going to dunk in here with some others. Here we go. Um, Caleb Pausch. I got it right this time, Caleb. Got it right. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, my favorite Easter egg was easy to brush over uh, when the stormtrooper says, all right, man, load your weapons. A very stormtrooper y thing to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're very, um, they're very stock. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and then we have yeah. sweet star Wars delight. They say dank ferric a lot. And that rodent creature kind of looks like a ferret. So we'll continue <laughs> to cover this one. Uh, I'm going to combine this and call that species dank ferret. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Those were yeah. seen in episode eight, right? Of uh, or chapter eight of mandalorian last year yeah when they're in the when they're in the lava pit and they're going down the the river they look over and they were running all along the side yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, oh very cool i forgot about that mm -hmm. um another quick one too the rocket and groot thing or like you know what i'm talking yeah, what about what i said to being everything is baby groot yeah, yeah, yeah. Him vomiting yeah. his baby grew. Mm -hmm. Him yeah. like, hey, do this, not that. And he's like, oh, okay, so I'm doing this. And he's like, no, 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 yeah. do this. That it's whole scene was group. very button press. That's a good yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, Mick Elvis chimes in with, uh, there's definitely been a lot of sounds taken directly from the movies, uh, pretty much totally unaltered. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Without a doubt. Um, okay. Now, uh, before we get into just a general chat about the episode, uh, we have uh, the Mando Code. Uh, so the Mando Code, as everyone knows, is back. It's our season-long giveaway contest. Uh, we've been revealing a new number each episode, including uh, we will do one on the season finale recap show. And on that final show, we'll let you know how to submit your guesses to win the Mando Code bounty. And uh, throughout the season, we'll be adding new items as it grows. Uh, the grand prize is a limited edition Mandalorian box, thanks to jewelrybrands.shop, uh, which includes the... Uh, Medallion from Werner Herzog's character, the uh, skull necklace, uh, Mandalorian skull necklace given to Baby Yoda, and a brick of Beskar steel. Uh, follow them at Jewelry, jewelry underscore brands and go to their online store. And if you want to save money, 10% off using TRB at checkout. Uh, and we're adding an item this week. Um, we're adding one of our t-shirts, the Mando Fan Show Season 2 t-shirt. Bang, there it is. Uh, so we have that. We have the box, and we also have a supersized uh, Funko of the child that we're adding, and we're going to be adding more as we go along. So keep gathering your numbers, um, and I uh, hope you have the first three, because now the fourth number in the Mando Code is one. So get it tattooed on your forehead or whatever you got to do to remember that, and on your way you go. Um, okay. Now, a spoiler breakdown of the episode. Let's just uh, have a general chat about it. But to get warmed up, maybe just each go around and give what our favorite moment was in the episode or just something we liked, like no pressure or whatever. Um, Katrina, did you have anything from this episode that really stood out to you that you took away and like, wow, that was that was the standout moment for me? Uh, I mean, I feel like for me, there wasn't too much of a standout moment outside of like your your standards, like the Moff Gideon appearance. Of course, I'm always happy to see him back. Um, but I think what really what I've been missing this season, and that what I what I really got in this episode was more of uh, the Mando and the child just being a dad and and his kid. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I just, I love that we, we return to spending time with them and kind of seeing what they're like around each other and how they interact and how they're picking things up from each other. Like the little, the little cup sip right at that end <laughs> before the scene change, like, Oh, made me so happy. <laughs> oh, that was cute. And just He's thinking about taking his helmet off. He's thinking. About yeah, it. it was close. I, I, I gotta wonder what the reaction to that's gonna be. I don't know if any of you saw last season when we saw like an inch of the Mando's wrist, but <laughs> who knows what this is gonna do to the fandom? Who knows? That's true. So as far as we know, the child has, doesn't has no idea what Din Djarin looks like. It just, mm -hmm. um, yeah, interesting. Um, 
Okay, uh, James, did you have a favorite moment? Yeah, as as odd as it as it is, my, my favorite moment. My uh, there was a lot great in this episode, but the one that really actually excited me the most, and I was like, "Whoa, that's awesome!" Was the uh, speeder bikes jumping off the the end, and not so much that shot that we've seen from the trailer, even though that was really cool. I loved seeing them the the whole process of going down, and then two of them hitting the rocks and exploding. And the guys flying off of the thing, I was like, I was like, this is well done. This has, this has, it, it, it ups the ante of how dangerous that jump is. And, um, yeah. that I felt that the, the graphics looked really good on, on that. And it was believable. And I was like shocked at it. Uh, and the rest of the chase, I was, I was, um, you're not, but like, kind of rooting for the guys who made it all the way to the bottom. You know what I mean? I'm like, Oh, those are the, those are the skilled ones, you know, yeah. it was kind of cool. I, I enjoyed that. Um, that scene and you know, you see it in the trailer, but when you're watching it in the episode, you're like, Oh, <laughs> that's yeah. a big jump. <laughs> they're, little, they're fearless. A little riskier than Darth Maul doing it over sand. In uh, on Tatooine, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the he's riding his big wheel. <laughs> yeah. What was that, Katrina? Uh, it shows it shows how passionate and like perhaps even like cult like the Imperial remnants are at this point, too. Like, they're mm-hmm. willing to risk it all. <laughs> yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. That's actually a great point. Very topical. Um, uh, so, um, Lacey, did you have a favorite shot or scene or moment? My favorite scene was actually the end with the Han Solo E Ray Last Jedi saving the day, coming in at the last moment to help them out and shoot mm. down the TIE fighters with like the That's dog cool. fight shot and the part where Baby Yoda is like acting like it's a roller coaster was just so funny and I Loved had the it. biggest <laughs> smile on my face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was pretty cool. That replaced the uh IG eleven where he's like happy as he's zooming in. Or whatever. Right, right. This yeah. now is like the new official, like happy Yoda face. <laughs> I, yeah. I just loved it, and the shot where he cuts to them both flying towards each other is like such like a starfight airplane battle shot. It was just very cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I love that they fixed like the Razor Crest is in really good shape right now. So the guy like perfect. He slaps a tracker on it, but he really takes pride in his work. He's like. <laughs> like i don't like this guy i'm gonna track you down so you can kill him but his ship's gonna be a million dollar ship yeah Yeah. i'm gonna give him what he paid for you know (laughs) give me good yelp and also put him put him to death (laughs) you can kill him but just let him know that i did stellar work on that crest short-term plans long-term plans you know right i think it was Um, uh mim Benis too kind of a solo reference there too Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think my favorite moment was, uh, and maybe also because I know he directed it, was uh, Grief Karga uh, with the cannons inside the tank and blowing <laughs> that guy away at point blank. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Because he just Pretty like, good. it's so, it's so like right out of Predator. Because in Predator, they had these guns way bigger than they ever probably would need if they didn't know they were fighting an alien. And... <laughs> He's just like got this like anti-aircraft tank <laughs> missile and just blows the guy away. No chance. He has him locked on missile lock, and then he just goes, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> 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 was, and you know he's directing it, so he sees himself in the daily. He's probably like, That's the laugh. That's the one I'm going with. I love it. So uh, and I, you know, like you, Katrina, I love Carl Weathers, like so it's it's great. Yes. Uh, um, all right, so let's just chat about the episode in general for a bit, um, and and what you know overall thoughts on it, and you know, obviously then eventually uh, afterwards we'll speculate on next mm-hmm. week. But uh, Katrina, your overall takeaway from uh, this episode or thoughts on it, uh, fire away, whatever you want to talk about. Yeah, uh, I don't know if it's just that I've been a- watching a lot of action movies this week, but I had a lot of fun watching this episode. Again, it was uh, it, it would have been always been a lot to follow the last episode with anything. And I think that the way it was done was well paced. There wasn't a moment I was necessarily like out of my element or bored with. Um, and it added enough to the story while moving it along. You know, it was never going to be, you know, the standout masterpiece 
Oscar episode of the season because that's not it's, it's not that's not its purpose, you know. Um, yeah. And so I thought I, I had a really good time watching this episode, and um, I really love Uncle Grief uh, and yeah. how much he adores Baby Yoda. Just warmed my heart. Like I I love that scene. What do you? Uh, has there been any explanation why he went from? black mustache to now white goatee like has there been a time jump that we are unaware of like yeah i'm wondering how long the time between the last time we've seen because car's hair is also longer uh if you notice and yeah. mm-hmm. like of course he has a new outfit the the Navar- navarro is like thriving and it's not just right. the area it's the planet that they've cleaned up and they're mm-hmm. like Two people so and she became a marshal somehow. yeah so i'm i'm wondering like how much time has passed and how much has gone on like behind the scenes and what grief has been able to do with his connections with the black yeah. market you know so yeah. yeah yeah um i mean maybe i mean you gotta think favreau did it on purpose and there's gonna be an explanation mm-hmm. or he's just gonna be like nah, screw you guys i'm just not telling you yeah. leave it for the, someone uh, else to pick up Right. Uh, Adam Odell chimes in. He said he ran out of Just for Men. <laughs> just for Mando. They, not on the shelf. <laughs> they, uh, they're they coming out with the visual dictionary, too, for Mandalorian. And usually they do a pretty good job at dropping in like random dates and things like that. And mm-hmm. we get a lot of our information from those things. There's a little side note on the side that says five years after this. Oh, when does that come this out? Thing happened. Uh, the visual. Day? I don't know off the top of my head. I just know they really they revealed the cover today. Maybe in the spring or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I assume that's Pablo Hidalgo, right? Probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. So one thing I thought was pretty funny, I guess, and maybe not on purpose was, um, you know, we've been talking about why hasn't Baby Yoda used the force in this season. Uh, is it, are they building up to something? Does he need to like harbor it because of everything he went through at the end of last season and he's not able to use it yet? And then he just uses it to grab some cookies. <laughs> like, I thought that was so funny. I was like waiting all year, like all season so far for the, some big moment. Like in season uh, episode two, the Rick family, you episode with the, mm-hmm. the, the beast that he suspended for, for Mando and they focus on his hand and stuff. And this one, he's just like, er? which is <laughs> realistically what we would all do if we had the force. <laughs> yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah. Season one, yeah. he like blocks the flames. He stops the mud horn. He heals uh, grief. Karga. Yeah. It's like, and man, though he two. tries to, yeah. Cookies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's like, he's a teenager now. Uh, he's, like he's in that, that stage where he just wants to eat and cause destruction. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. He keeps laughing when Mando kills or hurts people. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he, he's really well adjusted to what his dad does, you know. Yeah. <laughs> can uh, can I be the negative Nancy and just say Mithril sucks? <laughs> no, he does suck. He sucks. I think they it, want you to hate him. Actually, is it because of his neck farts, or is it something else? I don't know. He 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 puffed his pants in this one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, moment at the end though that when he's telling. Grief Karg is telling that X-Wing pilot, like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. They cut to him, and that's a very filmmaking thing to do to cut to him where yeah. he looks suspicious, where he's like, well, you're not going to tell them, but I'm going to tell them. Like, mm. that kind of thing. And he's made it clear that he's just trying to get a deal, and he's always making deals, and he's out for himself, and always trying to weasel him with his way out. I got a very Peter Pettigrew vibe from him, which is mm. a Harry Potter reference for those people that like Harry Potter. Mm. Uh, which is... <laughs> He very like the whole time. what he just made me mad the whole time just... well it's just very he's a very selfish character there's always that one character that like causes problems for the crew and like makes it so they're not all on the same page mm-hmm. um but at the end there if you go back and watch it guys like look how they cut to him and he has this look on his face like you're not gonna say something but i might type mm-hmm. thing interesting i yeah I, th- there was too many of the same joke like with with his character and it's like do this thing and then it's like i don't want to do it and then they're like how about we do this alternative thing and he's like <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. He like zoidberg's <laughs> over and it's just <laughs> i just i didn't like it it's three stooges what was that sound like a zoidberg yuck, 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 yuck. <laughs> but I, uh, I don't know very, Katrina, very annoying you're, you're, and definitely brought down the score for me. 
<laughs> Katrina, you were gonna you were gonna say something about him, but do you have uh, a vibe on this? Well, part? I've always been a, a fan of Horatio Sands, um, but I do agree with Lacey. <laughs> where like, you know, like to me, his character is inconsequential um, outside of the fact that he he could easily like be a piece that like comes back into the story again a third mm -hmm. time to cause mm -hmm. trouble for Mando, perhaps his revenge for you know his left eye still being blind from carbonite. Who knows? All um, I think about is this is a limited Looney Tunes jacket. <laughs> is that SNL? <laughs> it's one of the best skits ever. It's the laughing <laughs> score with Jimmy Fallon where they like can't keep it together. And Will Ferrell comes in on a jazzy with a little tiny phone. Oh, yes. And they're like, you shouldn't be shopping here. And Horatio Sands is like, this is a limited Looney Tunes jacket. <laughs> That's all uh, I think about every time I see him. Yeah. Like his, um, um, doesn't he play Billy Joel on SNL? And he like he's, <laughs> yes. he's drunk and he's snaps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's running over trees and yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um yeah. something Katrina said too reminded me. Um he said he's blind in one <clears throat> eye after being frozen in carbonite. That's very uh Han Solo Return of the yeah. Jedi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He lost his I sight for a little while after carbonite. Yeah, every time I hear about the effects of Carbonite, I think about how lucky Han was for a guy who was in it for like what a year or several months at least, like a hefty yeah. amount of time, yeah. more than a day. Um, how lucky he was with the side effects. Like he he like by the what the next day or so he was back to normal. So yeah, yeah. And ladies driving ships, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, <you laughs> cleared know. to pilot a ship the next day. <laughs> the general right. of a whole rebellion, you know. Lando's like, higher, higher, and he's like, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I can see a lot better. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Ding. He just takes Lando's leg off. Yeah, can oops. you imagine taking a year-long nap and then waking up to a military appointment as a general? <laughs> right. <laughs> You're like, I need a week, guys. Or thinking your girl <laughs> left you for her own brother. <laughs> what happened? Let me go to the I lake on the boo for a week. I still love that <laughs> meme where he's like, who's there? And there's like someone who loves you. And he's like, Kira? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. I haven't seen that. I gotta look that up now. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, so people but, in the I mean, chat are asking us to get into the cloning, Dark yeah. Trooper, yes. and Moth. Okay. Um, yeah, why don't we just get after it now? Because I, I'm not well versed on EU. So I don't know. Katrina, are you are you into EU? Do you know the deal with this stuff? Oh yeah, wanna... I've spent many a, a year in libraries reading that. <laughs> many that, so. a year. So, why don't you, uh, what's your take on, on the whole end of that uh, episode? Um, well, I'll let Lacey speak specifically to the stuff that happens in uh, games, but I know uh, the cloning thing, I'm in I've always been interested uh, in, in how the cloning story of the Emperor from, you know, the old Dark Horse comics kind of bridged over into this weird, wacky thing we have right now. Um, so, you know, I mean, to me, that portion of it was like, okay, this is just part of the experiments that will eventually like bring the emperor back. Um, so that was, that was pretty cut and dry for me, but like, I mean, it, it's really cool to see um, that, you know, they're, they're returning to uh, logistical things like midichlorian counts when it comes to these cloning techniques. Um, and right. yeah, yeah. Science yeah. versus the force. Yeah. Um, Did you Lacey, guys think when it you... was Snoke? It looks just like Snoke. Naked Snoke. Yeah. Little tiny I... naked Snoke. Yeah. Little like tiny, kind of small. mutated. Yeah. First of all, didn't take... I didn't even see what everybody else was seeing. I th This is like a man on the moon kind of thing. Like they showed <laughs> that scene and I was like, oh, it's like a man holding someone in his arms. Oh. It was really weird. And I like for the longest time, I was like, why is every what is everybody talking about? What are they seeing? And I finally saw it. It was like, you know, the 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 dress was all of a sudden white and blue or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, like the side of the guy's head is the eyes and the okay. You I'm saw the sailboat in the magic eye picture. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yes. so I guess this is like a figure. I was like, this is kind of this is kind of weird. But everybody that I saw that was talking about it, it seemed like they're like, it's Snoke. 
oh, that's the emperor right there, you know? And I was like, I don't, I don't know. I don't get that I at all. I didn't see emperor, but I definitely saw Snoke by the way he was bald and he had kind of a scar going through him type mm-hmm. thing. Well, I mean, either way, it's it definitely is a, it tells you a lot about like how serious this cloning program was to the right. empire and to right. these fanatical remnants too. Yeah. Um, I Yeah, so I'm thinking about that and it being Snoke, it wouldn't really bother me because I don't remember where I read this, but I'm pretty sure it was an official thing before season one came out where they said they're going to talk about or maybe mm-hmm. touch on like the, the dawn or the, the, the start the seeds or- of the first origins, order. Or, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Or, and that um, officer who went to report to Moff Gideon said, or, or to the, to, she said it to the Membanese character, you'll be heavily rewarded in our, in the new age. Or the, the new, new age or whatever, the new thing, which the is a first era. order. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So uh, I find that interesting. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know that I would dislike that, but uh, then I'm thinking of Rise of Skywalker. What did Palpatine say about Snoke? And he just said, I made Snoke. And I never thought Palpatine was tangibly, like he is up here. He's not doing manual labor. He's not doing the work. When he says I made Snoke, he had orders in place for this stuff to happen as contingencies or whatever. So mm-hmm. I I don't mind that uh, being being an explanation as long as it doesn't become a thing where fans uh, bring baggage from uh, the sequel trilogy into Mandalorian. That makes me a little nervous. But mm-hmm. uh, I remember being very intrigued at this part of the episode, and like my I physically moved up in my seat when um the cloning guy was talking in his message and and talking about how the blood didn't take and that uh, mm-hmm. i wanted to know more i remember wanting to know mm-hmm. more about that as soon as he popped up and he started talking i was like oh we're gonna find yeah. out this is yeah. the moment i got like really yeah. excited and it was like just before that I, I felt like i missed an easter egg because i never saw shape of water so i was like i don't know what i'm looking at here <laughs> and that's <laughs> shape of water yeah. is really good <laughs> really good yeah really good the- the dark troopers thing then what's the deal are they they're infused with the uh, the force via science so i went on like a deep dive today about these because i remembered seeing them and i didn't know where i saw them and then you know how you click and you click and you click and you click and then you end up mm-hmm. in a place that you didn't know you started like with Death the troopers <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Well, I'm saying like in the information of where you start, I'm thinking of like the Kazam oh. movie. I did that recently where I was like, I know this was an actual movie. And then yeah. I was just yeah. like 4 a.m. trying to figure it out. But so Dark Troopers came from a Dark Forces game, which I believe was in the 90s. Um, I remember seeing it and either my older sister playing it or my neighbors playing it. Like I remember seeing it, Um, but dark troopers, the interesting thing about them is that they're also from the EU and they fall into like what we know of them from the EU is they fall into three phases. There's phase one. That's like a very droid one. Then there's a phase two, which is like definitely more like kind of like bigger bones droid, (laughs) like kind Mm -hmm. of like a bigger deal. And then the third, thing to be and it there's a question of if it's part human like a robocop type scenario um so the question that's been coming a lot up a lot recently as of today is people questioning if moff gideon is taking old stormtroopers like veteran stormtroopers that have retired that can't battle anymore and making them these things so they're part human but part droid so they're more like intense and then it's mm. kind of got this weird sci-fi like half human half <laughs> droid zombie thing. Cyborg thing yeah so the question is like we don't know but it's it. yes but the because they're like just standing there being inspected so the question is like we don't really know if it falls into phase one to phase three to is this phase six but right. it's the idea that these robots are going to go out and just murder people that's horrifying <laughs> yeah Yes. <laughs> yeah. bots which Star also Wars. to me what was really horrifying about this episode was the scene that they figure out they're in a lab the music is so horror-esque it's like ree, ree, ree. and i was like oh my god they're gonna yeah. die especially when he figured out that moff gideon was alive again like it's very interesting that he was so sure that he was dead and then he was like no he's he's dead and they're like oh this is from three days ago and then he like freaked out and left but they take yeah. baby yoda's blood Ooh, that's so creepy. 
Yeah. Yeah. There are definitely Man- like horror things going back to the spider episode about Mandalorian that just like make me cringe. But I feel like that's just like a people love that, you know? It's I wanna definitely I wanna throw it out little- there too really quick. The Rogue One yeah. science scientist jackets. Um yeah. That, yeah. Uh, just, yeah, I saw that and it immediately took me to that. And then I was like, oh, is this like Tarkin initiative stuff? But like, or, you know, it, but it didn't have this the symbol. And I looked up the symbol. That's the Imperial Department of Military Research. And as of now, in canon, that's only been referenced once. And it was in a short story, uh, like a, a, a Tarkin like side story that was released with a book. And I was like, mm, oh, yeah. dang. <laughs> it's called yeah. like the Dark Trooper Project, the mm-hmm. like idea of these Dark Troopers. But then it kind of falls into this cloning thing, too, of like, is that a Palpatine thing? Is that mm. fitting into this somehow? Right. It's a lot of <laughs> questions. Somehow, somehow Palpatine returned. Here we are. <laughs> so, yeah. I, um, I, I love this idea that, oh, let's let's talk about Lando real quick. Because he just sent us. A oh super yeah, chat. so Lando C uh, hit us with a super chat. What's going on, Lando? Um, the real Lando Calrissian, actually. Um, oh, him. Said good evening. Love the intro <laughs> to the chapter with Din and the child working on the crest. It reminded me of Rocket and Baby Groot from Guardians Two trying to defuse yeah, the bomb. Yeah. Gotta love this little. Yeah, I am Groot. I yeah. am Groot. Right. I am Groot. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, whatever you do, don't touch them. Don't touch them together. <laughs> right. I am Groot. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mick, Are you okay? Mick Elvis said i like star wars explains theory oh shocker mm. alex is the best he has, has the best yeah. theories i um, actually think it, the funny thing is is we were just about to get to this of like what does it mean why does he yeah. want it and i completely yeah. agree with alex that that yeah. is a definite uh, like next step so he yeah. said alex's theory is that uh gideon wants to get force powers by blood transfusion but can't get it to work yeah i mean that's that is an excellent theory imagine so, you're uh, that crazy that you're like i want that power and you're like oh yeah. stop what yeah <laughs> i'll do it like yeah. the whole what like you ever see the movie I'll the Prestige? kill babies to get it basically mm-hmm. like do, the be- whole i'll do whatever it takes thing no matter what yes sac- like, which is or, like, or like or like the fly jeff goldblum like he pushed the science and it wound up you know, destroying him. But oh, the, I was, the crazy I you were thing is the, the Empire, like long right. live the Empire, and he's like driving the ship down. Yeah, mm-hmm. but like that just shows how crazy Moff Gideon and bad he is, is that he has nothing to lose and he's willing to take down anybody to get there, including a baby. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So the only yeah. thing that I, I don't click with that is I don't think it's Gideon. I think it's just the science in general of trying to 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 frankenstein a body and bring bring it back to life or clone it or whatever but then none of them have force powers like the original person did so Mm -hmm. they're trying to like infuse it with the blood that we all we all know from the the prequels the blood is what has the midi chlorians in it so they're trying to like jump start the force power of it and potentially potentially maybe this is where you get uh ray's father the mm-hmm. palpatine clone that did not have force powers but then it went to ray yeah like because that's mm-hmm. not how the force works but they might have birthed something and then said like oh it didn't work but you know there's something special about this person but clearly it, it was a failed uh yeah. force attempt to revive chief or something i, I mean who knows yeah. it's crazy stuff I, I i like star wars guys so uh galactic curator um that's um kendall kendall yeah what's going on man? uh he wrote i wonder if gideon will have found some of the uh, research darth plagueis did on manipulating midichlorians that'd be cool too yeah that yeah. would be neat like yeah. him quoting like you don't know what i know like i've been studying the Darth legacy of Plagueis and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And we'd all be like, I buying... am Plagueis. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> all of a sudden James Lucino's book starts getting more buys and on, online. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, well, first of all, uh, well, I guess last of all, the last thing we have to talk about is uh, jeans guy. <laughs> jeans oh, and t-shirt jeans guy. guy. Katrina, do you see, do you hear about this? You see no, this? did I miss this? So, <laughs> so I, I would never ever see this. So someone noticed there. it immediately, 
yeah, then I went back and rewatched it at like 3 a.m. Someone noticed it and I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. So I, I don't know who noticed it first, but there, there are wise people out there and they get screenshots. And there's a like um, Game of Thrones, you know, the, the Starbucks cup. They left it in the shot. There's, <laughs> right, a, yeah, yeah. there's a crew guy with his, uh, his, his watch on and his jeans in the background just standing in a shot. And the crazy what? thing is, if you worked uh, on you, that you show, you can't see his face. You can't see his face, but it's like it's like it's from his, his shoulder and his watch. Yeah, it's like, right. like no. but, but the funny yeah. thing is, is if you worked on that show that day, you know exactly who that person is, and you know <laughs> that I got an email, and he was like, "Oh God." Yeah, it was like it was like three. <laughs> 35 a.m. You and throw that one like, out. You throw that t-shirt yeah. out. You go, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Never I don't own any green t-shirts. Green. Do you guys know who was filming that day? I think <laughs> you should go look for that person instead. <laughs> yeah, that, that person no, woke no, up to a lot of text messages. <laughs> so we help we we posted a poll because this is clearly the most important thing happening right now. Um not not the epic dark trooper stuff this is the meat and potatoes we're getting into here right. uh whether they should edit it out for future <laughs> viewing like they did with the starbucks cup in game of thrones or leave it in and 82 percent of fans said leave it in because it's, it's gonna funny. have just leave it in yeah. it's gonna have its own little like update charm it. update it with like whatever digital edition is out in like 20 years and like add an extra arm to the shot <laughs> You know oh, what's gonna Mando's happen? Special watch. edition. <laughs> yeah, Favreau being like, I didn't get to edition. really do my vision. <laughs> yeah, someone uh, at celebration is gonna have like a piece of cardboard holding it in front of themselves with just their arm and their leg out. I guarantee 100%. it. Someone's gonna do it. Yeah, just like just <laughs> oh like a pink shorts boom guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Who yeah. who just passed? I guess the real guy. Rest in peace. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Clayton Sandel, Sandel cracked him down and like, did an interview with him. Which uh, is so funny. Thing. But yeah, yeah, you know that cosplay is coming. Just someone with yes. like a yeah. cardboard. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, but um, yeah, I saw good. a lot of people saying it clearly uh, to go back to something we already discussed. I had it written down, though, um, that it, it was clearly playing Snoke's theme. And, and I didn't when they that. showed the thing, I was like, OK, but I listened to the clip. I'm like. It's the same, just ominous, dark tone, Emperor <laughs> yeah. Snoke. Dark nothing. tones. That is not proof that it is the Emperor. It's just, it's just the dark side evilness in well, Star Snoke's Wars. Snoke's theme is, is Palpatine's theme. Basically, the yeah. Thing. That's yeah. what I'm saying. So it's like, yeah. it, this doesn't prove anything, but yeah. just that you can. And then they put it side by side, and I'm like, it's a different note. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Here's Snoke's. Oh, here's the other one. Uh, yeah. I'm like, uh, yeah. no. Someone yeah. said March of the Resistance plays at the end. <clears throat> it when does. He talks to yeah, when. Um, yeah, I'm talking about the other one. Yeah, but not this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's it, yeah. So Ludwig did a great job by uh, changing it a bit and making it more um, sad sounding. It, it didn't sound like a march of the resistance. We're going to go fly across the water and, and, and beat the bad guys. It was almost it was, like a more we've lost sad, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was slower, different type of uh, octave and, and that sort of thing, but it was there for sure. Just like they dropped it in solo briefly, march of the resistance. So good job mm -hmm. by Ludwig there. Uh, Freezy two, three, two, four. Thanks for the super chat. James, where was Ahsoka during the original trilogy? <laughs> Running a deli. Uh, that's what I would say. Yeah. Um, yeah. hmm. I, I don't, I don't know. I imagine just the, the yeah. Where has Luke been for the past five years? Went away doing Jedi stuff, outer rim things that matter to the galaxy, but you don't know about it yet. Um, yeah. theoretically also searching for Ezra. And then when Sabine, you know, contacts her or something, she, all right. Who knows? Um, all right, let's uh, before we get out of here, let's just uh, have a little fun guessing what might happen next week. Uh, Katrina, any inklings on what you think we may get into next week? I know you already um, said uh, a little bit about maybe the end of the episode. Sort of thing. Yeah, I feel like the the end of the episode might be where I, I don't think they're going to wait till all the way to the end of the season to introduce Ahsoka. I think she'll if she comes in, she's going to come in. She'll have a short story with the Mando and then you know we'll move forward with wherever they're going but like I definitely think that we're going to learn a lot more about 
um, the child's capabilities this episode. I think we're maybe even going to learn a little bit about like what what happened to the child before he landed landed in Mando's hands. Um, so that's that's just the gist I'm getting from like what I've seen from like the three uh, word description and things like that that I've seen floating around. So mm -hmm. yeah, right. uh, definitely Jedi lore, uh, Force lore, that kind of stuff. Nice, uh, Lacey. What do you think we're getting into? Um, I think which first of all his ships being tracked has no one learned in star wars to check their ship before they leave gotta check it <laughs> like no it, one does learned. no one have mcafee come on <laughs> no one's checking is mcafee um, still the one <laughs> i don't know which yeah. again going back to what i said about uh horatio sands character at the beginning they do a shot on that mechanic where he looks suspiciously yeah. at yeah, baby yoda yeah. that you knew he was gonna so I know it sounds like, oh, that's an obvious thing, Lacey, but look for moments like that in these type of shows because they're telling you what's going to happen. It's like pretty mm -hmm. obvious. Um, mm -hmm. I think he's going to get where he needs to go. He's going to run into some type of trouble again. I feel like he's everybody's like assistant this season. They're like, mm -hmm. he's like, hey, can you just point me in the direction of the post office? And they're like, yeah, but first you have to beat this thing and then I'll tell you where the post office is. And he's like, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah, and yeah. watch it reminds my child. Me of, it reminds me of classic <laughs> RPGs where yeah. you're like, you have to, you have to mm -hmm. go find the witch. Side you know, quest. And then you, you go find the witch, quest. and she's like, I need an apple in order to do my potion. I'll give you what I, what you need. <laughs> <laughs> you bring me the apple. So you gotta go find All the side apple. side quests. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um but yeah no i think we're gonna see ahsoka i think we all kind of figured that with dave filoni's episode because if anybody's gonna bring her into live action it's gonna be him yeah yeah and he's writing and directing it so yeah um favreau got a breather on that one um <laughs> james what uh, are you in line with that do you think for certain we're getting ahsoka tano live action every fan's gonna love it it's gonna be embraced mm. by all so i i as a percentage, I'm with you. I'm more on the side that that's happening in the next episode because it just makes so much sense um, mm -hmm. that, you know, it's Dave Filoni and, and it'd be a good time to bring her in or whatever. Um, there's even, you know, the rumor that the episode's called Jedi or whatever. If, if that ends up being true, obviously this would be the episode. But here's the thing is that I was really thrown when they, when uh, Bo-Katan said her name. And when she said her name, it immediately made me think this isn't going to be a surprise. This is going to be the climax. Um, mm -hmm. That is now the goal because he was looking for other Mandalorians. He found him. Then the next goal now is he needs to go to see this Jedi and they're teeing up the excitement for the rest of this season. And they're, they're not going to blow that on episode five you know right yeah. right um so i'm i am kind of thinking there's there's an outside chance here that um that this character doesn't show up until later in the season and it and it is the like oh we didn't get her in five what the heck well maybe we'll get her in six we didn't get her in six what, what's going on and then yeah. when seven and eight come we're like boom this was so I'm, crazy because the story is coming kinda... together plus ahsoka plus i don't know I'm kind of with you there. I think it would be a very um, a clever move on their part to be like, all right, Dave, we're putting you right in the middle of the season. You're writing this one. You're directing it. Everyone's going to guarantee Ahsoka showing up, and she just doesn't show up next week. She just doesn't. <laughs> yeah. That would be the best thing that they could do because fans will be like, oh, man, now we have no idea what these guys are going to throw at us. What you if know what they I mean? titled it The Jedi and it was a Boba episode? <laughs> just nothing to do with The Jedi, yeah. yeah. Or, or it's just another, it's like, it's another Boba. frog lady episode. <laughs> yeah. She's back. Back, baby. Um, we have a super chat from Sweet Star Wars Delight who said, oh no, I hope Moff Gideon doesn't get to sway the child to the dark side because we know they've said, come to the dark side, we have cookies. Yeah. <laughs> People are saying in the in the chat that they think that they're gonna 
lead Moff Gideon to Ahsoka and he's going to bleed her for her midichlorians. I was I don't like that. I don't I, like I don't I don't think so. Idea. I I don't think so. Um which at also, the same time I'm the one that was like, "Oh yeah, he's totally killing Bo-Katan." <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm like, yeah. "No, not Ahsoka." Before before we get out of here, I do think uh and I mentioned this I think on TRB, but I think because they revealed Ahsoka via Bo-Katan in such a non-climactic way, mm -hmm. I think it might be possible that months and months ago when this came out that Ahsoka was going to be in the show, it could have been in one of those controlled leaks where they're like, you know what? Let's get that out there. Get the fans rumbling about it and, and, and speculating about it. Because if they wanted it to really be an in-show big huge reveal there's the robe and oh my god there's a found it they, yeah. they wouldn't have had bo -Katan be like oh you're just gonna go uh, see uh Sokotano on corvus <laughs> what i've considered <laughs> i've considered do you think do you think they they reshot the scene after the leak happened and then i was like no nah, probably not but i also did consider maybe you know maybe they have that stuff in their their back pocket in case leaks happen like she she originally the, the one that they were going to go with was the edit where she says, you know, it's a Jedi. She'll help you out. She doesn't give her name, but they did shoot her saying the name in case they wanted to play with that later. And then the, the leaks and other things. So they're like, you know what? Let's go for the let's go for the one. I, 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 I do. I do want to say that they they laid down in just these first four episodes a lot of story threads. Um, there there is an ultimate bad guy that we have to face, and like that that needs to be the climax of the series. Like, what are we going to do about Moff Gideon and this wild and crazy clone problem? Um, yeah. So <laughs> that's what that's the number one reason I think Ahsoka's coming in before that because at some point. Bo-Katan, Ahsoka, the Mando, and Moff Gideon are going to come together and it's going to be a big, like, to do. <laughs> I I would love that. Um, yeah. Almost like a little Avengers vibe where everyone comes from these different angles to fight fight the cause. Um, yeah. I, and my last thing on the Ahsoka thing, whenever she pops up, I think you're going to get it full bore. I think you're going to, she's, she's, brandishing lightsabers she's fighting mm -hmm. they're they're using this as not a, a test per se but they want to put every facet of a live action ahsoka here now so that if they do want to opt for a series after this they have the vibe from the audience on what they thought of it and if they were able to pull it off so it's not just gonna be one of those hi i'm ahsoka and, and i'm just here she's <laughs> gonna be fighting she mm -hmm. she's she, we're gonna see action with Ahsoka Tano in this. Um, and I know there's a, a few that popped up. Someone said, where's Ahsoka in the sequel trilogy? Her voice is at the end of The Rise of Skywalker. That leads me to think that maybe she had died because all those other voices were people who had passed to become one with the Force, but I don't know. Um, Lando C with Super Chat. Thanks again, Lando. Uh, so cool. Um, I'll say this now. Don't sleep on the Ghost Crew all together with Din mm -hmm. help Battle Moff Sans uh, Zeb by the end of the season. Uh, wow, let's get all the Rebels crew. Get Hera in there. Yeah. Uh, could be interesting. I think Hera's and busy. Was, yeah. <laughs> she ain't got time for this. Well, yeah. I mean, and, and, I would imagine right now she's probably in some sort of leadership position, you know, back in, somewhat in the core worlds. And she has a she has Jason Sindula, she's a little son, right? She's got a preteen to mm -hmm. take care of. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. He's eating cookies wherever he is. <laughs> Mando knows what that's all about. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I guess that's pretty much it. Does anyone else have anything you want to throw out there before we uh let's get out? How about blue macaroons thrawn confirmed? <laughs> <laughs> blue macaroons equals thrawn confirmed. Right. Love Gosh. it, thrawn live action. Yeah. Um, nothing else, <laughs> chocolate, oh, yeah. chocolate chip <laughs> <Jake>, cookies. <laughs> Oh, yeah. uh, I, I do want to comment that like um, that one scene where uh, Baby Yoda and and uh, Mando are getting the wires in. I feel like the pressure put on Baby Yoda, like I have personally felt that pressure. And so where it's like, what do you mean the blue wire? Where? Where? Mm -hmm. Yep. So I just wanted to say I really related to that. And I, I, I appreciated that and felt for him in that episode. <laughs> I'm with you on that. Like working with my dad doing stuff outside and the louder he would get the more nothing made sense exactly <laughs> turn exactly. it left i'm like okay and i turn it right he's like no, no that one no. that yeah. one <laughs> that yeah. one that is an amazing John's like picking connect up, observation like... katrina yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that's you're so right 
Um, all right, last comment here we have from Danny Uresti. Tiny throwing up reminded me of Baby Groot throwing up in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Uh, Mad I Groot forgot, vibes. I mm-hmm. forgot Baby Groot. Do we have any other comments? Uh, um, we have Where the Jeans Crew Guy Shows Up, 1854, if anybody's wondering. There you go, Katrina. So go to 1854 <laughs> and yeah. find Jeans Guy. And Louis, uh, Louise she- Alves said, I'm craving... For some, some she's craving some lightsabers. Like, nice. yeah. yeah. Frog Always. lady is the key to all of this. Uh, from- <laughs> that, that's actually what Ezra saw <clears throat> in the holocron when they merged. Yeah. <laughs> she, that was <laughs> it. <laughs> she saw fro- he saw frog yeah. lady. Um. All right. Well, we you know you got to hand it to Carl Weathers for doing a heck of a job directing this episode uh stellar work and um i loved him quote tweeting everyone tweeting at him from uh, small fans to popular people he really was engaging with the fans and he does that hashtag be peace which for whatever reason makes me feel calm so thank you carl (laughs) weathers uh for helping my social which is funny because his character is kind of chaotic yeah, I know. he's blowing people away point blank. Yeah, <laughs> well, that would have been funny if he blew that guy away and he goes, Be peace. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hashtag be peace. Hashtag be, yeah. Hashtag be peace. Bong. Yeah. Um, all right, so before we get out of here, uh, Katrina, um, plug away everything you got going on where people can uh, hit you up, find you, find your work, all that stuff. Yeah, definitely. You guys can check out Looking for Leia on Sci-Fi's YouTube channel um, and all their streaming services right now, um, anywhere, anytime, on your phone, on, on anywhere. Um, and you can look for me uh, anywhere on the internet if you look for Oh Katrina, that's O-H-C-A-T-R-I-N-A, especially my Medium page where I, where I will be publishing uh, new sor- short stories throughout December. I'm really excited to get back to that. Um, and also give MWM Interactive a follow. I work social over there and we make really cool video games. Um, and then finally, I also host a, a, a Star Wars-esque pop culture podcast called Ito Banta Tambien, uh, which uh, you guys can find anywhere if you look for Itubanta Pod. That's Y-T-U-B-A-B-A-N-T-H-A. Wow, Bantha. Pod, a P-O-D, anywhere on the internet. <laughs> I love it. I love your art for that. Thank I have it. So I think because you gave me like a card at celebration. I love it. Yes. It's so good. Yeah. I love are drawing you... little baby banthas. They're just so yes. <laughs> are you gonna do a version with a bantha brushing his teeth next? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I wanna like do she a little She said she signed an NDA, John. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, secrets, very big yeah. secrets. <laughs> All right. Very cool. Um, I want to thank everyone for listening and, and or watching. Uh, what, there's people going to be listening to this after, not the live stream. But thanks to everyone who checked in and uh, hung out with us uh, in the live chat and the live stream. We appreciate that. Um, we want to make sure that you're going to Star Wars News Net for all of your Star Wars news. The Resistance broadcast, you'll see the three of us on every Monday and Thursday uh, on YouTube and all of your typical um uh, Uh, podcast platforms i want to thank our patrons because this show right here would not happen if it wasn't for your support so patreon.com slash resistance broadcast uh thank you for all of your support and especially our generals carmelo andrew staley jeremy myers neil shaw david probus john reese micah harrison jetta rosewater michael gaines bethany russ harbison kendall gelnar and paul olson thank you all so much uh for your support um next friday uh black friday uh not a lot of people are going to be going shopping. Come hang with us Friday night. We'll be joined by Yoshi Vu is coming back to Woo. talk about uh, chapter 13. He's a visual artist. Uh, he worked on the rise of Skywalker and Mandalorian season one. Uh, we're very excited for Yoshi to come back. Such a cool guy. Big video game nerd, Katrina. I don't know if you know Yoshi, but he has every system like ever and like yeah, multiple copies huge of them. video game wall. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, very cool multiple systems in case he loses one of each like he's he's the he's in, he's amazing with video games yes. um but uh no katrina we want to thank you so much for joining us this was a lot of fun and um hopefully you know obviously people are gonna be busy around the holidays you have your short story stuff coming on but maybe next year you can come on our, our regular podcast and, and talk star wars again sometime mm-hmm. that would be great i'd love to and thank <laughs> you all so much for having me on yes this is so much fun <laughs> and From James Lacey and myself, uh, thanks for watching, listening, and we'll see you next week, next Friday, right here on the Mando Fan Show. Uh, We'll see you around, kids.